Story recap here. Today I'm going to explain a horror, mystery, and thriller film called The House That Screamed. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. One fine day in 19th century France, Therese arrives at a boarding school. There, a class is currently underway under the headmistress's teaching, Mademoiselle Fourneau. But one of the students, Catherine, shows zero interest in the class, not even taking notes. Because of this, Fourneau gives her punishment. So she orders Irene, her favorite student, to send Catherine to the seclusion room. Afterward, a fellow teacher, Mademoiselle Dupre, comes by to tell Fourneau about Therese's arrival. Then, Therese is enrolled by a friend of her mother's, Monsieur Baldi. While Fourneau gives them a tour of the school, Therese notices odd occurrences, such as a door closing on its own. She even sees a hand silhouette in one of the windows. In the garden, Forno notices someone sneaking around because the person accidentally dropped the plant. However, she tells the other two that it's probably just the wind. Afterward, Therese is left to settle on her own as she snacks in the dining room. But once again, she notices a door opening by itself, even though no one is there. Before she could check it out, one of the maids visits to check on her. During dinner time, Therese notices that Irene is showing some interest in her. Once bedtime comes, Forneau calls Irene alongside two other girls to accompany her to Catherine. When they're out of earshot, all the other girls immediately come up to Therese. Despite the uptight spirit earlier, all the girls suddenly become enthusiastic and eager to meet Therese now that their strict watchers are gone. They even go through her clothes, cheerfully trying everything she owns. Meanwhile, the situation with Catherine isn't so peachy. When they arrive at the seclusion room, the girls strip Catherine down before Irene starts whipping her back. After finishing, Forno sends the students back to their own room before cleaning Catherine's wounds. Forno apologizes, but the girl is already too traumatized to respond. Furthermore, Ferno goes back to her own room to reprimand Louis, her son. He's been the one causing the odd incidents to Therese because he was following her around. Hence, Ferno tells him that he's forbidden to interact with the girls, especially because she thinks they're all worthless. Alongside that, Ferno reminds Louis that even though he can't have a relationship with the students, he'll find someone to love someone similar to herself, which Forneau thinks would be best for Louis. The next day, Irene assigns Therese to tidy the beds with Susanna, one of the chattier girls in the school. Susanna starts talking to Therese about boys and tells her that everyone feels deprived because they don't have anyone from the opposite gender to interact with. So, Susanna tells her a little secret. It turns out a woodman, Henri, occasionally comes by to restock their supply in the woodshed. During that time, the girls draw lots to see who can meet up with him there. She also mentions that there are girls who escape from the school, presumably to find a boyfriend. Susanna even points out that one of the students, Isabelle, secretly dates Louis. But she also adds that everyone is aware of Louis being a creepy peeping Tom. After ballet class, Isabelle immediately sneaks out of class to secretly meet up with Louis. Because of their forbidden relationship, the two are both worried for each other's sake due to the risk of getting caught and punished. Still, Louis promises Isabelle that they'll run away together someday. Oddly enough, they hear footsteps come by their door and try to open it. Realizing it's locked, the unseen character walks away. But it does cause a bit of worry for the two. During gardening class, a girl arrives to tell Therese that Forno is summoning her. However, this turns out to be a ruse for Irene to talk to her in their room. Irene reveals to Therese that she's the one who organizes everything with the girl's secrets, such as the one who lets them see Henri. Irene also gives her vague threat, telling Therese that it's up to her whether she'd let Forno know about their misdeeds because the headmistress values Irene's words. At night, Isabel finds a secret note under her pillow, so she goes to the bathroom to read it with discretion. It turns out it's Louis, inviting her to meet at the greenhouse. Excited, Isabel waits for everyone to fall asleep before she sneaks out to see Louis. But when she gets there, an unseen assailant grabs her from behind and starts stabbing her repeatedly. The next day, Catherine is finally released from the seclusion room. However, when she gets to the dorms, she sees that Forno is shouting at everyone. After noticing Isabel's disappearance, the headmistress assumes that she ran away and that some of the girls are covering for her. Forno even suspects Irene because she's the only one with access to the keys, given the fact that Forno favors her. However, Irene defends her innocence. Afterward, Forno orders the prey to change the locks and board all the windows. During the girls' shower time, Louis takes the opportunity to peep at them by sneaking into the vents from the boiler room. However, Brachard, the school's handyman, sees the open vent and closes it. Because of this, Louis gets trapped in the vents. He starts desperately kicking the metal grate but can't open it. 
When Forneau notices his kicking sounds, she ignores them. With no other choice left, Louise calls for anyone left in the bathroom who happens to be Therese. This starts a close relationship between the two. However, Irene immediately notices it. She speaks to Therese, knowing that she started seeing Louise. Therefore, she threatens to snitch on Therese if she doesn't meet them later at night. Later on, during sewing lessons, Susanna notices that the woodman, Henri, has arrived for his delivery. So, Irene makes an excuse to send Susanna out because it's her turn to meet him. She tells Forneau that Susanna will check the stew they left on the stove for cooking class, which the headmistress allows. Eager for the opportunity, Susanna pretends to check the stew before leaving through the kitchen. She rushes to the woodshed and meets Henri there. Without even a conversation, they immediately get down to business. After dismissing the girls, Forneau notices that Louis is hanging around outside, so when he gets back, she scolds him again. Forneau even tells him that she's aware of Louis Louise sneaking around to meet one of the girls. She doesn't know which one. Still, she doesn't approve of Louise seeing any of the girls in the school, reminding him that he should find a girl like her. Meanwhile, Therese is brought to Irene's secret room, where she starts maltreating Therese. Irene tells her that she's the one who told Forneau about Louise but doesn't mention that Therese is the girl he's meeting. Furthermore, they find out that Therese's mother is a cabaret singer, so they start degrading her even more, calling her mother a prostitute. Irene takes out a corset that she took from Therese's belongings and forces her to wear it. Then, Irene commands her to sing, treating her like a cabaret singer. Even when Therese cries of refusal, Irene doesn't listen to her. When they hear the bell tolling for dinner, they all get back up, but not before telling Therese that they'll do it again soon. Because of the bullying, Therese has had enough of the boarding school. During the stormy night, she quietly prepares to escape. However, Irene wakes up and notices her leaving. Therese opens her bedroom window and drops her belongings downstairs before sneaking along the ledges. Irene gets up to check on Therese, but instead of stopping her immediately, she just follows closely behind. While Therese successfully crosses the other window, Irene goes outside to watch the main exits. But she doesn't know that Therese actually went to see Louis first. Because of their close relationship, Therese doesn't want to leave without telling him. Louis expresses sorrow for Therese's departure, but she doesn't tell him why. With that, Louis just provides her support by breaking his piggy bank and giving his money to Therese. He even tells her which route she could take to escape from the school grounds. With one final goodbye, Therese goes on her way out. However, she couldn't find a single exit that would lead her outside. Without a key like Irene, she couldn't open the doors, nor could she find an unlocked window. With utter desperation, she tries prying the windows open with the handle of silverware she found in the dining area. Yet, she has no luck in opening it. Suddenly, she hears a wooden door creak open, alerting her. When she sees that no one enters, she goes back to opening the window. Still, Therese doesn't manage to pry open the window, before someone grabs her hair from behind, then proceeds to slit her throat. On the other hand, Irene just returns inside after not being able to catch her escape. But first, she takes the belongings that Therese threw down from their bedroom. Thinking it's an odd occurrence, Irene starts looking around the school for Therese. Right away, she comes upon the window that Therese was trying to open and notices a wet patch on the floor. Irene starts freaking out and runs towards Forneau's room. Irene immediately reports the incident to the headmistress, telling her about Therese's disappearance. They reconvene in Forneau's office alongside Burchard and Dupre. There, Burchard says the only exit is through the main gate and that the walls are unclimbable without a ladder. So, Irene points out that Therese couldn't have escaped through the gates since she was keeping watch the whole time. However, Forneau is convinced that Therese escaped because it's the only logical reason she's gone. She even says that Therese probably got past the gates before Irene could catch her on sight. Still, Irene is finally starting to piece together that something strange is afoot. She points out that five girls have disappeared in the last months, including Therese, but they've never heard from them again. Forno mentions that boarding schools always have girls running away. However, Irene rebuts, reminding Forno that the girls who escape are often sent back by the parents, or they at least get a letter about it. Still stubborn with her own hypothesis, the headmistress says that the girls probably got home and just didn't bother to write, choosing to brush off Irene's worries. So, Irene asks why Forneau doesn't send a letter to the families either. Due to this, Forneau becomes defensive because Irene starts pointing out the errors in her ways. In conclusion, Irene decides that she wants to leave the school. The headmistress tells Irene that she won't let her leave. However, Irene threatens Forneau that she'll reveal her awful mistreatment of the girls if she doesn't let her leave. In the end, Forneau confiscates Irene's privilege to the school's keys. The next day, Forneau is noticeably put off by Irene's sudden change in attitude towards her. 
Meanwhile, Irene is still adamant about leaving the school. After being dismissed from cooking class, she makes sure that the kitchen windows will be easy to open. Overall, Irene is trying to make sure that she'll have an easy time escaping. When she gets outside Farno's office, Irene decides not to go in. Instead, she tries her luck in escaping. However, she realizes that all of the doors are locked. Hearing the sounds of doorknobs, Farno notices that Irene is trying to leave so she starts to come after her. With zero luck downstairs, Irene tries to go back to the bedroom, but it's also locked. When she hears that Forno is nearing her, Irene goes further upstairs to run away from her. But still, most of the doors and windows are locked. With no other choice left, Irene hides in the attic. Soon enough, Forno realizes where Irene is and follows her upstairs. However, it is too late because she comes across Irene slumped on the corner. As she slowly walks towards the student, she grabs her, only to realize that Irene's head is bleeding. Furthermore, she notices that Irene's hands are missing. Shocked, Forno starts feeling woozy. But when she sees a shadow walking around the attic, she follows it. The trail leads her to Louise's secret room, where her son cheerfully greets her presence. There, Louise is standing in front of a table, with a body covered by a blanket. Forno starts backing away from Louise, feeling petrified as he introduces her to his perfect girl. When he uncovers the blanket, he reveals that the body parts are made up of different girls he killed to make sure his perfect girl resembles her mother. Amongst various others, Louise used Isabel's eyes in Irene's hands, pointing out that those parts are similar to Forno's. Afterward, Louise locks Ferno in the room with the body, urging her mother to talk to his girl. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.